everybody this is Zach Nasser here and the reason you're seeing this video is because you have showed interest in what I call the Rockstar Rituals okay the Rockstar Rituals are a group of morning rituals and evening rituals that you do right after you wake up and right before you go to bed to kind of bookend your day with amazingness okay and the reason why I say that is because I started to see a pattern in a lot of millionaires and billionaires and high performers that they have these rituals that they do especially in the morning and especially in the evening and there are a lot of them but I have narrowed it down to some of the most common ones used by a whole lot of amazing performers like Jim Quick, Tim Ferriss, the famous biohacker and you know many other people okay and then I started to get into the science of it the clinical studies like positive psychology um, you know, and many other different types of studies. So, the rock star rituals are fasting and exercise, hydration, meditation, journaling, um, journaling, sleep hacks. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all five. I believe uh, I put exercising and fasting together because they do a really similar thing. Um, but anyway, so the reason why we're here though is we're going to narrow it down to the top four that you can do as just one thing because if you take on too much at one time you're not going to be able to stick with the habit so if you try to do all of these things all at once you might not really get the results you're looking for so what i'm doing right now is starting an online facebook group called the wake up workout challenge where basically you do intermittent fasting so let's say you finish dinner at 8 p.m you wake up at 8 a.m. Now you're fasted. It's been 12 hours. So you now you don't have to do it at 8 a.m. But I'm just saying, for example, if you stopped eating at 8 p.m., it would be 12 hours later. So you could do this at 10 p.m., midnight, whatever. But you wake up, work out while you're in a fasted state. Okay. You get hydrated. And... Um, that's basically it now the sleep I, I did say that sleep was in there too okay and I'm gonna tell you some of these clinical studies and I don't want to keep you here too long but so they had people in this clinical study a third of them woke up and worked out at 7 a.m. some of them did this at 1 p.m. and some of them did it at 7 p.m. now the ones who worked out at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. They didn't have any effect on their sleep. But the one who woke up and worked out in the morning had dramatically increased sleep. And they, they did a sleep study and they measured it. So the people who worked out in the morning, they got the energy from the cortisol and adrenaline in the morning and they were able to sleep better at night. The other two groups did not have those effects. So um, another amazing study about working out, they had one group of people who... Uh, just worked out one group of people and these people all had depression one of them was taking an antidepressant and working out and the other one was just taking an antidepressant so all three groups had the same amount of beneficial effect on their depression okay but the interesting thing is that three months later after they had stopped working out the group who was just working out had a six percent relapse rate into the depression the one who was just doing antidepressants had like a 36% relapse. The other one that was doing exercise and uh, antidepressants was um, 31%. So what does this mean? Okay, it doesn't mean that working out is like taking an antidepressant. But not working out is like taking a depressant. Okay, so the other thing is if you're empowered by just doing the working out, you're probably a lot less likely to relapse because you know you have the power to change your state on your own okay now again some people need antidepressants just to get up out of bed and to go to the gym you know or whatever um, but the thing is it, we think about working out to build muscles or lose weight but we often forget that we can exercise to just feel great and to elevate our mood okay um, in an interview one of my friends was doing with Dr. Datis Karazian, who's the author of um, Why Isn't My Brain Working? He's a research fellow at Harvard. We asked him, what's the number one thing people could do to benefit their brain tomorrow? And he said, work out for five to 10 minutes. Just get your heart rate elevated for about five minutes. That's the best thing you can do for your brain. And he said this because a compound called BDNF is released, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Many people call this fertilizer or miracle growth for the brain. 
but it also has natural antidepressant-like qualities, okay? So we often think about, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym to look good, but what I recommend is working out to feel good, to get that energy boost in the morning, get your metabolism going, and to have better sleep at night. Now I'm gonna include more sleep hacks when you join the group and, and you know, other hacks for, you know, meditation and for gratitude, journaling, and all of that stuff, but that's gonna come later. What I want you to do right now is just commit to that one thing that you wake up and work out while fasting, okay? And it doesn't have to be early in the morning if that doesn't work with your schedule, but what I mean is that you haven't eaten for at least 12 hours when you work out. The reason being is when you fast for at least 12 hours, your brain releases BDNF. There's that thing again, the miracle grow for the brain, okay? So you, your brain sees it as a challenge and you start to grow new neurons and you start to repair damaged neurons and you start to prevent your neurons from dying, okay? And you also get that mood boost from the BDNF. Now, another interesting thing about this is when people worked out fasting, fasted, according to a study, men's HGH, human growth hormone, spiked by 2,000%. For women, the amount was 1,300%, okay? So this is a massive boost in human growth hormone that keeps you with bigger muscles, less body fat, it keeps your hair growing in in its natural color, it basically keeps you young and it, it's a precursor for a lot of other things like testosterone that also help keep us feeling energized and young and confident, okay? And, and testosterone is important for men and women, increasing libido and confidence and burning fat, keeping your muscle tone. Um, so the fact that we can do this, that we can exercise in a certain way and boom, get those hormones going is huge, okay? Um, you're gonna get a lot more out of your workout. The other thing is when you have fasted for 12 hours, these are studies at Stanford that did this, not only does your BDNF increase, but you go into autophagy or autophagy as some people call it, mean called self-eating. So your body recycles all the defective uh, tissues and proteins that are not working in your body and recycles it, which dramatically lowers your level of inflammation. Okay, um, it can also help with weight loss because your body is going to burn the glycogen, which is stores of glucose, first. It's going to burn that stuff off first, and then when you work out, you immediately start burning the fats. You immediately go to your stores of body fat, and your body releases ketones. Okay, so when you burn fat, your body releases ketones, which is going to produce more energy or ATP at a cellular level, less inflammation and stress. So by doing this one thing, not only can it help you sleep better, it's going to enhance your mood, it's going to enhance your brain function, it's going to enhance your hormone health, just by not eating for 12 hours and when you wake up before you eat just do a little bit of workout five to ten minutes okay and the reason i say five to ten minutes if you want to do more you can do more if you're a super athlete already please go for it do more but the reason i say five to ten minutes is because we just want to get your metabolism going we want to get that spike and if you're if you kill yourself working out the first day and then you can't keep up with the habit then this isn't going to work for you long term so just do a little bit okay and i'm going to have some videos about uh, workouts that you can do for any age level, skill level, and with no equipment whatsoever, okay? Now my favorite type of workout is called high intensity interval training, where, or burst training, where you're bursting out a workout, where you're like giving a 7 out of 10, you know, don't do 10 out of 10 because you're not trying to hurt yourself, but 7 out of 10, giving it a lot of effort and then you take a short break, and then a lot of intensity and then a short break, okay? And there's many different ways to do that and when you get inside the group, I'll give you all kinds of tools that you can use if you're not familiar with high intensity interval training. But what happens with this type of workout is you get a boost in testosterone and human growth hormone and you do not get a boost in stress hormone, cortisol, which builds up belly fat. Because here's the thing about fasting and exercising if you do it too much or both, like if you're fasting 20 hours a day and working out three hours a day, you could stress yourself out so much that it actually has a retroactive and negative impact. So what you wanna do is just a little bit of each and that high intensity interval training will keep your body burning calories in an, in an accelerated manner for up to 48 hours, okay? Without spiking your cortisol. So it's high intensity interval training is my favorite, but you can do other types of workouts if that's not your favorite, and I'll talk about that. Um, and then intermittent fasting uh, and working out in the morning or when you wake up, it helps with the sleep. 
we'll talk about other sleep hacks in the group. Um, and then hydration. Because you're working out and you haven't eaten yet, drink at least 32 ounces of water. And you go, whoa, that's a quarter gallon. That's a quart. That sounds like a lot of water, Zach. It is. I'm going to be peeing a lot. Yeah, you should. You should flush your body out at first. You get new plasma in your blood and your kidneys start to filter out all the junk that shouldn't be in there. And so you hit your maximum level of hydration first thing in the morning, and then after that you just maintain it. So the Wake Up Workout Challenge is these four amazing habits that you can integrate into one action. Just wake up, work out, drink some water, and then just do your day like normal. Okay, now, um, we're like I said, we're going to talk about meditation and deep breathing and journaling and gratitude and all these other things uh, later, but what I want to do is get you on this one habit now that you can commit to and start getting the results that you're looking for, not just for building muscle and burning fat, but for feeling great and for getting your hormones in balance and for, you know, staving off all of these long-term degenerative problems that come from um, these issues. And now I know you're like, oh God, Zach, waking up and working out, that sounds so tough. That's why I want to build a community around this, okay? And I've been doing it myself and I'm doing this just as much for you as I am for me because I want to also have this positive feedback, positive um, peer pressure, you know, to keep doing it, to stick with it, okay? So thank you all for watching this. I'm gonna have even more info inside of the group. I'm gonna be posting little videos every day. Um, to keep you engaged and to give you more information on the science behind all of this stuff. Um, but until then, I'll see you in the group. That's the explanation of what we're doing. If you're interested in this, then please join the Wake Up Workout Challenge group. And as time goes on, we'll build up to the full rock star rituals with even more sleep hacks, more journal hacks, more meditation hacks, and all of these other different things for um, you know, working out, fasting, and all of these different tools that you can use. You know, I want to make this accessible to you. Um, I want to make it to where it's as simple and easy as possible to integrate these things. And that means doing as little as possible uh, that you can keep up with and continue to do, okay? Um, because if it doesn't become a habit, it's not going to really make that lasting change that you want in your life. And I'm creating this group so we can all help each other out. So thank you. I'll see you on the inside. Um, just click the link to join. Uh, thank you so much. I'll see you on the other side.